And you said If my people who are called by my name Would humble themselves and pray Then you would hear from heaven Then you would heal our land Oh God, open up the windows of heaven Pour down healing rain to a dry and thirsty land This is our response to that scripture
God bless you, my friends. This is Apostle Keith Barra, and what a blessing it is to be with you here today on the uh, premier broadcast on the Now Network here, The Voice of Revival. Praise God is the name of our broadcast. I'm so glad to, to be with you today on this very important day. You know, it's an important day for the world. And uh, what's important is uh, we, you know, we heard about, I'm sure all of you that have heard about the terrible, what's happened in uh, Afghanistan. And uh, as, as I, I remember when Vietnam, when Saigon fell in 1975, and it brings back men, men, many memories of that. It was just that uh, what happened. Uh, and the problem is, the the philosophy, the belief, the belief that America can solve these problems uh, with with military alone. Uh, America, I mean, we could not persuade the people neither in Vietnam nor, um, and we spent twenty years and a hundred and fifty. I've heard all kinds of numbers, $150 billion uh, trying, uh, f fighting the war in Afghanistan and building the, uh, the, I think we spent $20 million or $200 million or something on the, in building the embassy and the total war effort there over the past 20 years, all the different presidents we've had since 9-11. Um, we talking about the, um, B uh, B President Bush and and uh, everyone since then was not able to do it because they can't do it alone. Because this is a battle, not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. And they sent in the Marines, but they what they should have sent in was missionaries, sent in apostles and prophets. If they would have took a fraction of that money and given it to men like myself, men who have a calling of God to reach the nations, amen. What a great, great work we have done. I am um, uh, about 20 years ago, the Lord sent me to Pakistan. And if we just pull up the map of Pakistan, we just want to show you. I didn't, you know, understand the wisdom of God at the time why He was sending me uh, to Pakistan. Um, um, so, so, but Pakistan is right in the middle. That country is right next. If you, if when you look at it, we bring the map up. The northern part of Pakistan is connected to China. On the right side of Pakistan, looking at this map, we come up. Um, and if we can just zoom in a little bit more. Um, uh, the right side of Pakistan is connected to, um, uh, to India. And uh, the, the southwest of Pakistan is connected to, in, uh, to Iran. And then to the west, or the left of, uh, looking at the map of Pakistan, is connected to Afghanistan. But, and so we are winning. Uh, the, Lord sent me to, the Lord sent me to this country. And I, I, it was in April of 19, I mean 2005, at that time, my mother was sick, and the Lord told me that she was going to die. And uh, she was, he, that he was not going to heal. We would be believing God for healing, but he said that she was not, my mother was ready to go to be with the Lord. And so I went to, the Lord told me she was going to die, and I could not let it bother me as it, as it normally would have. My mother and myself, we were very close. And we worked in a ministry together. And we were called into a team ministry. And uh, praise God. We were, when we were together, we were like iron sharpening iron. 
And so the Lord said, you cannot let it bother you as it normally would. And uh, he says, or you will miss what I have for you. You will not fulfill your ministry. So you can't do it. And so he, you know, again and again, he kept telling me, I'm the oldest of eight children. Um, I didn't tell my, my six sisters or my brother about what the Lord had revealed to me. And so I began to draw back, and my mother didn't really know what was going on. And I, I, I just I wouldn't tell her. I couldn't tell them. Uh, and so for my sisters and them said, to, to them it was like their parents had a divorce. I mean, my mother was so close. But I was preparing myself, and I didn't know why. So one week after Mom died, I had, I had just gotten an invitation to come to Pakistan and uh, invited there to, come, to go and preach. And I would not normally have went, but because of the instruction of the Lord, I went to Pakistan. And I was amazed when I went there. When I landed in Pakistan, and you know, five o'clock in the morning, there's, there's, there's hundreds of people, probably more than 500 people there at the airport praying. And, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. In Islam, there's no, they don't believe in the, the Trinity. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't understand it. Uh, and so they're, they're praying and they feel nothing, but they do it. And I was amazed at how diligent they were. And, uh, and as I was there, the Lord spoke to me how he had called me to be an apostle. He said, as, as I have called Paul, as I called Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles, I've called you to be an apostle to Asia. And I was stunned. I was shocked many times when God tells you something like this. Um, he tells you things that's just unbelievable, things that just, don't make sense when you look at your circumstances or the situation. I said, Lord, I'm not Asian. I don't have an Asian connection. I don't know any, you know, I didn't know anybody, uh, you know, that was Asian. And I didn't have a door. I said, Lord, I don't have a big church. But uh, the Lord told me that he had called me. And I, and, I, and I imagined, I mean, I tried to imagine how could I, I knew it was true, but I just couldn't understand. And so the Lord began to open the doors. And because I, I went to Pakistan and I met the people there, I preached to 32,000 people on night. We, in some of those videos, we showed the clips of some of the crowd, 32,000 in Lahore, Pakistan. And I was so happy that when I came back, I was able to show my pastor before he uh, passed away and went to heaven. I showed him the picture. Uh, of the crowd, me preaching in Pakistan, and just a few, because um, that was like 1980, and that was just a few, uh, oh, 80 or 85, I forgot, and um, clips of the video. But he, he said, I can see, there's a sea of people. And I couldn't imagine how the Lord could do this, how the Lord could use me. And as I, when I was leaving Pakistan and looking at the land the Lord be and to deal with me, if we can get these people saved, no, you will get these people, many of them saved, and I'll use them to reach with, this, with the zeal that they have, with the discipline that they already have, when they get filled with the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God, i use them to reach um, Asia. Now we know that Asia is on pace to be 60% uh, of the world is going to be in Asia. They say within a few decades, 8 out of 10 people in the world will either live in Africa or Asia. Uh, where Americans only have uh, 2.4 children or whatever it is. In these countries, they have many, many more children. And uh, so well, I have seven children, but most Americans are not like, not like us. And, uh, and so their population is growing. 
And so the Lord wants to reach these nations. He wants us to reach these nations. He said, he, he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, there's some people, they, they just ignore that scripture. I had somebody, uh, I had a couple of people um, reach out to me and, and tell me, they said, why are you going overseas? Uh, we, need, we need preaching here. We don't need to be, you know, uh, to, you, we don't need men of God like you going overseas. And I told them that, that's so wrong. Uh, the Lord loves every soul. He said, for God so loved the world, John 3, 3 16, that he gave us, praise God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for the whole world. Whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When the day of Pentecost came, in Acts chapter 2, uh, it's recorded. It happened over 2,000 years ago. He says, It shall come to pass, saith the Lord, which was the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. And in that day, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon the handmaidens. So we, he prophesied there was going to be a time that was, that was going to come where God was going to use women, that he was going to pour out his spirit even on, on women, and that the women would prophesy. Praise God. And that women would be, um, I, I believe, operating in the apostolic ministry. And I, I think of um, one, one great uh, woman of God, Amy McPherson. Amy Simple McPherson. That God used her, her, her church. She raised up uh, the Four Square Church. She built the temple in Los Angeles. Amazing stories about Amy McPherson. And uh, as I, I think it was Old Roberts that said, if you took all the miracles, now God used the signs and wonders to convince people of the truth of the gospel. And see, God uses the apostolic ministry. There's a new ministry that was the fivefold ministry. And he gave some apostles, pop, uh, ap apostles, uh, prophets, pastors, and teachers. And there's more apostles that's mentioned in the Bible. If you look up the word pastors, uh, the, pa the word pastor is, 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 is only found that one time in the Bible, pastors. But the word pastor is not in the New Testament. But this is part of the fivefold ministry. The primary ministry that God wants to use to reach the world, what we need is the apostolic ministry. Why? Because when God sends you out and he sends you, he, he sends you with signs and wonders. Praise God. And when the signs and wonders happen, then people believe. So God has sent me, for instance, to many places. And we started the program with the video showing just, just some of the places that I've been preaching, preaching the gospel. And for instance, like I, Lord sent me at different times up to uh, Alberta, Calgary, Alberta, near Calgary, Alberta. And there was an Indian reservation there about um, 60 miles from Calgary, from Calgary uh, called the um, Eden Valley Reserve. And so when I went there, there's, the, even though there some preachers had been there before, uh, many of the people were in unbelief. Many of them did not receive, some didn't want to receive the, uh, the gospel because they felt, well, this is a white man's gospel. I mean, they had a different culture. And, um, and uh, they even like you try to have time and, and, and always say, okay, we're going to have, be this service at 730. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't start coming in. Uh, a, a few might st struggle in, but really most of the crowd then comes after 9, 10, 11. They, they said time is not a real thing. It's a white man's thing. It's a white man's construct. And, <laughs> and, and so it may have a revival 
uh, difficult. We really had to have a move of God. <laughs> and, and thank God that he came, he, ca he came in. To show you an example of the time, the problem we have with time, there was one uh, family we were staying with, and because uh, uh, we were too far from, uh, it was like an hour to Calgary, an hour, two hours uh, to Calgary, so they had to stay on the reserve. And we're standing in some homes, and uh, it was just, it was it was just an experience. And so, I remember we were there, uh, and it was one time we were there. We were there. The offerings had been really low, and uh, we, they couldn't even afford milk for the kids. And at that time, I took uh, my daughter Katrina and my son. Uh, they were about eight and ten years old, and and uh, and, and then my my oldest child Gina was there, and uh, <laughs> and so uh, Jerry had just the man we were staying with. He had just got his check, and he apologized because he didn't have much money uh, there to help us, and he didn't have uh, I didn't have milk for the kids because I always tried to have milk for the kids cereal and stuff and so he says I'm going to the store to get my check and I'll come back with some groceries uh, for you guys and so I thanked him and then after about half an hour I started waking the kids up because I had we had just got a few dollars and uh, so I said all right we're gonna go to the store and, uh, uh, and get some things get up get up get up kids and he said, Dad, he said, he said he was coming right back with the groceries. I said, Gina, don't you know how these guys are about time? I said, we will be skeletons waiting on them to come back. And I said, let's get up and go get some now. And so he came, as to, he came back 36 hours later. So it's it's a different thing that you know that you have to deal, and they didn't you know didn't know what didn't want to believe, and because they have that culture and whatever they, that is, Satan uses has people bound up in different religions, different beliefs all around the world, but he says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and God raised up apostles and he says. Uh, it's in, in Acts 6 and 33, and with great power, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the Indians come, when they would come to the service, and they would see the power of God manifest on my life. And God had taught me how to, to really pray and seek his face. I read, the Lord had, had sent me to um, Bible book story he told me to get uh, the autobiography of um, one uh, one of the great men of God and I began to to read uh, read and I learned about how he prayed and how 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 he sought God to God brought revival Charles Finney praise God and you have to read his you can read about him but it's not like reading his writings, his books that was written. And I learned the secret to prayer. I learned the secret to praying for hours and many hours. Uh, praise God. To the anointing came in so powerfully that people believed, that people saw signs and wonders. One of the great uh, miracles. There's many miracles that happened on the reserve when I first when we first got there. The brother that we were staying with, Brother Jerry, he, uh, I looked at him and he, you know, you could see he was in pain, his shoulder was twisted, and so I said, uh, and I've been praying the whole way for for three three day drive from Detroit up to Calgary, three day drive, and I'm, I told the kids all the way there, we're gonna be praying. You wanna go? You, we have to be praying before we get there. You have to, we have to pray to bring revival. And so when I got there, I, I could see that Jerry was in pain. And so I said, what happened, Jerry? And, 
And uh, he said, I, I was riding a bike out here in the mountains, and I fell and fell on a rock and broke my shoulder. And uh, so I said, okay. And I went in my room to begin to pray, the room, room they had for me to begin to pray. And the Lord said, go out there and lay hands on Jerry. I said, Lord, he said, Lord, so I'm going to heal him. And I said, shouldn't we wait for the service so people can see? He said, no, you need to pray now. So I went out there and I prayed for Jerry, laid hands on him. And God healed his shoulder instantly, and he straightened up. He said, wow, you have no pain. And I didn't know that Jerry was supposed to be setting up the equipment. So <laughs> when his shoulder was broken, he couldn't do that. But now that God healed him, he was having big speakers. We had big speakers that was about, I don't know, uh, about four feet tall, big, heavy speakers that he set up. But now God healed him, and so he could pick those speakers up. And so from the very beginning, we had we saw revivals. And every night, when the people came to service because they didn't know what was going to happen, great miracles that happened. And so um, there was one, one of the great miracles that happened. Uh, this man named Patrick um, Ear was his name, uh, E-A-R, Patrick Ear. And Patrick had got drunk or whatever with his girlfriend, and he had beat her up and chased her out the house naked. And um, I don't know what she did to him. I don't know the source of it. And up in Calgary, the nearest house is about a mile away on the reserve. A lot of land they, 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 when they get it. It's not like Detroit where it's just next door house is just, you know, a few feet away. It's, the next house is usually um, uh, about a mile away. And um, so she's in the cold and is out there running naked to find someone to let her in. So the whole reserve was just talking about what happened. And so, you know, when they told me how it was and, and the story was like, as a, as a father of six, uh, uh, six daughters and a brother to six sisters, I was always... Yeah, I was just defensive of the women, and and so when they told me, I was just, just angry, and I was almost like, "Let's go get him," <laughs> and uh, touch him up a little bit. And but she had got her brothers, and they beat him. And I mean, when they fight up there, the Indians, they really fight, and they they almost kill one of them when they fight. So. They had beat him, stomped him in his face, stomped him till they broke his shoulder, stomped him and they broke his arm. It was all down here, it was broken. And, his, and uh, so when I saw him, you know, so everybody heard about the beating and everything, and I was like, that's what you get. The whole reserve knew about it. So he had to go to Calgary General Hospital and they wired his mouth shut. And he told me, you know, and some of it, they, they just, it was this crush almost turned it to powder. And so they said, we're going to have to, they wired his mouth shut and said, we did as best we can and we're going to have to, um, have to let your, your, your jaw grow, the bone grow, and then we're going to, um, we're going to have to break it and reset it. And then we're going to have to break it and reset it again. We probably have to do this three times. He says, so it's going to be almost a year uh, before you will be as close to normal as we can get you. And so he came to the service one night uh, for healing. And so I came in. So when I came and prayed for him, the Lord told me to pray for him. He said, stretch your hands towards him. I remember my right hand. Stretch your hand towards him. And um, to, and pray for him. And as I began to walk, the Lord said, go over there and lay hands upon him. And the Lord said, when you lay hands, lay your hands like and cusp his jaw like this. So as I stretch forth my hand, going towards him, walking towards him too. Lay my hands on him. All of a sudden, a ball of fire. No exaggeration. A ball of fire about this big appeared in my hand. 
I'm looking at it like, whoa! <laughs> and the ball of fire and it's getting brighter. It's a, a solid, solid white, uh, pure white. Um, uh, that that was you know, and it got brighter as I walked towards him. And then lightning started coming on this ball from my hand. And I was like, I, I couldn't hold it loose and put it up under up under him. And I just got as close to him as I could, and I was like, "Yo!" <laughs> and it flew out of my hand. I never touched him. It, it flew out of my hand right here. And I saw, I saw it go into him, and it melded and flattened, and it went here and covered his whole arm and the whole thing and disappeared. And I said, how do you feel? Patrick, he says, I feel good, I feel good. And, uh, you know, so I, I feel good, I feel good. I said, can you open your mouth? No, he got, he got a wire shut. So he went back to the doctor. Uh, we weren't supposed to go for a month or two months, but he went back that, that, next, that week. And the doctor says, oh, you're looking good. Let me, let me see. And he touched him and feeling, wow, this is good. He said, let's x-ray him. So he x-rayed him. And the doctor come running down the hall with the x-rays in his hand. He's like, what did you do? What did you do? He said, not only is your jaw healed, but it's set perfectly. And it looks like it never happened. God totally healed him. So I, I didn't know. So this happened probably uh, in 1980. And I, I didn't know, but I was thinking about it. It was so powerful as far as seeing it. I said, I wonder if anybody else saw that. Because I have discernment of spirit, and sometimes the Lord opens your eyes and your ears that you hear things, that you see things. Um, uh, that, that many most, many other people don't don't see. God can't. Uh, he can, but he just chooses mainly to use this to show the servant. He's directing me, or whatever. And uh, so, but I, I said this time. I wonder if they saw it. And so I called them up, and they said yes, we saw it. And I was I was really amazed that they said they saw it. I said, yes, brother, why we. And we see a lot of times, and they, uh, when the anointing comes up on you real heavy, um, you know, one one girl, her her name was Jezebel. I asked the father, "Why name you Jezebel?" And he said, they're "Going through the Bible, and they just saw the name Jezebel in there." And I said, "He didn't tell you who Jezebel was, no." So, so she said, her, her father told had, had told him about how God uses me, and he says. They said, Brother Barr, he's like a superhero. And because they seen such manifestation, and they would see. And he said, when you were cast out demons, your hand would begin to glow. And uh, he said that it would glow so much that we couldn't even look at you. And I talked to about, uh, I talked to about six of them that were still there, that remembered, I remember that was there um, in the 1980s. And, and uh so God used this sign and wonder to turn the whole reserve around. And people used to say, when Brother Bar comes up here, the whole reserve gets saved because people come in. They can't believe what God has done. So God has given me the apostolic ministry that I have preached. Uh, you know, I forgot how many countries I've preached. Um, I, I, I don't know, about 40, 50 countries, I don't know. Uh, that's f me physically being there. Then the others, I went and uh, so preached around the world through different media. And uh, praise God. And so, uh, but God uses the gifts of the signs and wonders, praise God, to bring deliverance and heal people. So, so we've been, uh, God's been, he directed me over a year ago to go to Pakistan. Uh, to reach Pakistan by Skype. Now, I've been ministering in Pakistan for, um, 
I, about, I don't know, about, I guess about 15 years. And we've been doing it by Skype. And where I was starting out with a small group, but our crowds kept getting bigger and bigger till our last Skype Pakistan broadcast, we had 8,000 people that came. And over 6,422 got saved, received Jesus as Lord and Savior. And um, in just a second, we're going to show some of the, again, some of those Skype, the pictures from the Skype Pakistan broadcast. And I was amazed that I was looking at all these people. And uh, I said, how are you getting all these people? And so they said, they talk about how that people have been talking about what God has been doing through me. With there's over 1,000 unchurched villages in Pakistan, one, over 1,000. And Pakistan is like 95% Muslim. And so, but there's one, and so, um, and in these, in these Skype villages, in these, uh, in these villages where they're, they're unchurched villages, there are, they're like 95% Muslim. And the Christians that are there are greatly persecuted. In Islam, you can be, you can be a Christian uh, but you are not allowed to, I mean, if, you, if you're a Christian, you're under great persecution. And so the people take great risk uh, by becoming a Christian. And some of them, ever begin, begin, when they're baptized, they get baptized, they're going to be just uh, ineligible for many of the government's positions if you're baptized as a Christian. So God is doing a tremendous work. And so since, in, in just the past two years, and the work is just exploding, and we're having so many people when we do these Skype Pakistan broadcasts, we have, we have so many people that, like I said, the last one, we had eight, over 8,000 people that came, and 6,422 6, got saved. Now, for our next one in just a couple of weeks, we believe in God. We're trying to raise money um, to have over 20,000 people in these unchurched villages. And from the beginning of time, these, these churches, these villages have never been reached with the gospel. And so many of you don't know what it's like to go into a country, a minister of a country, where the gospel has, has not been preached. I had a friend of mine years ago that um, he had went to India, and I was excited to to meet him when he came back. And he looked so bad when he came back. He had lost weight, and he had some terrible things that happened to him. And, I, and his first name was Harvey, Brother Harvey. I said, Brother Harvey, what happened to you? He said, man, over there they got demons that ain't never been bound. <laughs> He said, you resting with them, them demons. It's something different. And so he, uh, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, so he had, he was driving to India. And in India, they drive crazy. They drive crazy. Uh, people say Indians can't drive. No, you, no, you just can't drive like them. Because they, they're just used to just uh, you'd be coming down a, 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 it'd be three lanes on the road that's supposed to be one lane or two lanes. And they just, they'll come into the other thing and if you, if you was driving on the other side, you would just panic and go, ah! <laughs> and, but they'll just, they just go. And so, uh, Harvey was in the, he had a driver that, and many of them over there, you, you, sometimes you tell them to, to, don't do that. And they, but they just like, oh, I know what I'm doing. And so they, Harvey went down a mountain in that car. And he turned around and the car was flipping and he hit, hit his head so much that he busted his head and it was bleeding. The top of his head hit the roof of the car 
as they was tumbling down. And uh, he said, and then the guy, he said, when he was looking at it, he was trying to see what the cut was in his head. The guy was holding it with a flashlight. It was, it was bloody and stuff. He had a big flashlight. And the flashlight slipped, slipped out of his hand. And the guy dropped the flashlight right on the spot where his head was busted. And he said, at that point, he just lost it and he started crying. And so we are really reaching uh, the nations. A lot of people are not committed, but I, I'm committed. And so I hear these stories, and so I really pray for my protection. And, uh, and, you, and you, just, you just don't know. I remember I went to, we went to, um, so you, you have to be in prayer when you're in the car. because you, you just don't know what's going to happen. I remember when we went to Puerto Rico years ago, and uh, a, a brother was driving us, and he's like, oh, I know the, I know the way, I know the way. And we were driving to Puerto Rico, but the hurricane had come during the time of Hurricane uh, uh, Patrick, I think it was. Or, uh, uh, in the 80s, hurricane. Hurricane had blown down all the signs. The, so the sign, you know, you were driving, it, it, it didn't mean nothing. If, if they had a sign or if it was telling one way, the signs was turned around because of the hurricane and stuff like that. And so we, we didn't know where we was going and uh, where we was in. And I remember we told one brother, we was driving, and we got to the road that he was going, and we said, they got flashing lights up and do not enter. And he drove around the flashing lights. And we said, brother, you ain't supposed to do that. This, the road is closed this day. I, I know the way, I know the way. Oh, it'll be all right. And I said, I said, but they got, you shouldn't enter and drive here. And they got the, the things. And so he didn't listen. So I began to really pray. I said, Lord, protect us. This man won't listen. And so all the other preachers, we was in the car, and we was the first night, we were like, oh. And uh, we shouldn't go this way. You know, they, they got these signs up. Man, you better don't touch it. When we came on the other end of the, the road, I forgot how many miles, like 20 miles. When we came up the other end and saw the workers, and the workers, and they were talking in Spanish and stuff, they came up to us. They looked like they had seen ghosts. They were looking at us like we were ghosts. And they said, what? So he began to talk, and so they told the brother, they don't understand how we came through. We came over a road that wasn't there. The road was washed out. There was no way we should have been able to drive. In some parts it was pavement, but underneath the pavement, all the dirt that supported was gone. And he told us, oh, we shouldn't have went there. And we looked at him like, we tried to tell you. But thank God for his mercy. Praise God. And so <laughs> I have been, I have been through some crazy, and say some crazy stuff. But I'm an apostle. And so I believe God for my divine protection. And he, sent us, he sends us where wickedness has ruled the land because of evil people. Evil gets in evil leaders who have the people to follow their evil agenda. Hitler, Stalin, just take those three men. Hitler, Stalin, and Mao Zedong. In the past 100 years, they never killed personally anybody. There's no record of Hitler killing anybody, of, of Stalin killing anybody. But they persuaded other men to follow them for the love of money they followed them. They were made rich and whatever, and they killed over a hundred million people. And so Jesus said the love of money is the root of all evil. And so you can't, that's why you can't the U.S. Army and Special Forces 
can't win these battles in these countries. We only the apostles can win it with having the apostolic anointing to go in and God uses them to work signs and wonders and we can change men's hearts. We can change uh, that they will want, will want to follow Jesus and praise God, hallelujah. And so when you get full of the spirit of God, the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And so when Christ comes in your heart, he changes you. He changes your heart. I have a desire, praise God, to preach the gospel because I want to see people saved. Jesus said, if you love me, you will feed my sheep. And that's what I love doing, feeding his sheep. Praise God, bringing folks to Jesus. And so I went places and preached. And I wanted to preach, and I usually did if I went. I went preaching every night. And I couldn't wait to get to the service to see what God was going to do next. And it's just been an amazing adventure. Praise God to see the power of God move mightily. And so I thank God for what we're doing with our Skype Pakistan broadcast. And um, as uh, Brother Blaine to get ready to I want to show some of those videos again, the, the pictures again of, uh, of, of when we were in uh, uh, Pakistan, yes. And so this is, the, this is our last uh, meeting we had, over 8,000 people in Pakistan. We have men and women, the whole families come. I said, how, how are you getting these many people? So I asked Brother Rizwan, he says, um, and, and these are people praying, 6,422 got saved. They asked Jesus to come into their hearts, knowing that they're going to face a life of persecution. But they came and gave their hearts to Jesus. They come into the service, and so for the first time, they didn't know that God heals. They didn't know that God's working miracles. And so I prayed through... Uh, we have a big screen there, and uh, and people can see me on the screen as I'm talking to the brother, and we interpret it. I'm looking live, even though I may uh, uh, do it from here in Detroit, and and uh, in Auburn Hills, rather. I'm preaching, but they can see me and look at them, the wide view of the crowd. <sighs> Praise God! And they they separate men on one side and women on the other side. And um, so it was just, just amazing, a thousand people, they come. And the devil tried to, when well, you see this picture here and you see all those people, they had to walk. Because in the past, I rented up, um, rented buses and brought the people in. And, uh, but this time, the rains came, the devil tried to stop it, where the, where the buses were. And it was so muddy, they couldn't get the, the, the buses out of the lot. So those people walked, some, some walked miles to come to this great Skype Pakistan service. And so we are reaching people that have never been reached through Skype Pakistan. Our, our Skype Pakistan crusade. We are reaching people that in the history of the world, they've never been reached. God has called me to do this. Praise God. And so right now we're trying to raise money. We're asking for people to partner, partner with us and help us support. Write down that number. Um, yeah, Apostle Barr, and this is at uh, uh, um, cash. This is our cash app number. Amen. And so you can make a one-time gift or you can do it every month. I have another app. If you would just go to keithbar.com and you can, you can apply for that and you could do a monthly gift. We're trying to raise over $12,000 so we can reach 25,000 people. And so we have to continue to buy more equipment and, and uh, the, the Skype broadcasting is free. 
but see, I hire people to go into these cities. Um, they don't, and so we hire a team. I, I think we sent 60 to 80 pastors and missionaries that went into uh, these uh, different sky Pakistan villages and go door to door and tell the people, come to the great Skype Pakistan crusade with Apostle Bar. And uh, we try to um, have the brother I work with, and maybe we we'll do it on the next time, broadcast or, or I'll record something um, with my talk with him. And it's, it's just amazing what, what God is doing. And we're reaching people that have never been reached. And Jesus told us to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. So, and God is doing a work in touching people. And so some of them in our services, people have come up and said, what more can I do? God fills them. They fill them with love of God, and they want to share it. They say, I want to go into the world and preach the gospel. So we're starting a Bible school. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be starting the Keith Bar. Uh, Signs and Wonders and Miracles Bible School and teach them how to believe God and operate in Signs, Wonders, and Miracles and get them filled with the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to be sending, uh, I've already sent some of my books over there, and we're translating them into Urdu and teaching them about the gifts of the Spirit and the Holy Ghost. Praise God, how, how, how to believe God. And how God can work work miracles, and it's, it's just I'm so excited about what God is doing, and, and I ask that you will partner with us and help us, and just think we've had uh, our, our government has spent so much money over 150 billion dollars. Now a billion is a thousand million, so so. That money that that was spent and wasted, and then the the people they they had the, and why I say it was wasted is because we just we just left Afghanistan and left the equipment there, uh, left the air base. There was people that were so desperate yesterday, as our our plane was was leaving. That they jumped on the airplane as it was leaving, and the airplane went in the air. They wouldn't, they wouldn't get off, and some of them fell from the sky onto the pavement. And they held on as long as they could. I don't know why. I don't know what they were thinking. What well, they were thinking, trying to escape. But you know, that desperation was so great. They show, saw one person, I, I guess they must have fell from 1,000, 2,000 feet off, yeah, out of the sky, onto the, the airport below, taking off. So it's sad. These people are desperate. The U.S. Army cannot win the battle, but God can do it. You know, praise God. God wants to raise up men and women with great faith with great power and great authority and watch God work miracle after miracle to win the hearts of the people. And so I've been many places and um, I've been down to Mexico and preached to the cartels and, and won many, many people uh, to the Lord. And um, so, uh, um, for instance, I was in uh, Mexico um, uh, several years ago, and uh, we was, I was there during the time of the Mexican Fourth of July, which is in Ju which is in June, and uh, so we went over a guy's house that was uh, brother Abel, and went went over his aunt's house. Um, they were going to feed us for it. They was having a celebration. And so as we were going, we come come against, come come to what looked like a police brought, uh, blockade. The roads were blocked. They blocked everything coming and going. And 
So as as we come, and so the police came down to the cars, and they warned all of us, nobody uh, should not be on social media, don't be on Facebook, don't post anything about what we're doing over here with warning you. And they were very stern. And they, they came in and they had AK-47s and Glock 9s and um, uh, all, all types of weapons and grenades and, and the trucks, they were they pulled up the trucks at M50 uh, carbines on the um, machine guns on the back of the truck so they could just kill and mow people down. And uh, it was very serious. I said, when they came up to our car and they looked down and then they saw me, saw me, they knew I wasn't, um, my features that I'm not Spanish. And so they said to me, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm a missionary. And, um, wow, time has really flown. I'm a, I'm, I'm a missionary to preach the gospel. And they were stunned. And I'm going to have to finish and save this up because we only got less than one minute left. But God used me to touch those people. They were so moved. They took their hats off. They had me go down the road and pray for about 30, 30 of them. And I took their hats off as I prayed. And the Spirit of God moved. And I found out later they were not police. They were drug cartel people that was imitating police. They was going to kill somebody. But as I came, God touched him, and they said, we can't do this anymore. So we're going to ask that if you're blessed by this broadcast, that you write in and let us know. And if you, and if you would like to, um, praise God, help us reach these nations. We're trying to reach um, uh, over 20,000 people uh, in just a couple of weeks this and we need your help to reach this 20,000 people. Praise God. We've got to buy more equipment, more like, everything. Praise God. And this is, this is good ground. This ministry is good ground. And so these people get saved. They want to go around the world. And God's using us. going to use us. Use them to reach Asia. We're establishing the Bible school there. Praise God. And so the Lord cares more about souls than anything else. And so don't you know that God will bless you if you help us reach souls for him, that your gifts can help us reach thousands of souls in a land that has never, in cities that have never had anyone preach the gospel. And many, many won't go to us. Some come to different parts of, for instance, Lahore and Pakistan or Islamabad. And, um, but... We're reaching the unchurched villages in Pakistan and sending them across the world. So if you would like to um, support, I also I'd like to tell you, if you want to see some more signs and wonders, you can see us on uh, those of you watching us on Facebook or on our YouTube channel, Rev Keith Barr. My webpage is Keith at KeithBarr.com. Keith at KeithBar.com, and you can see the great things what we're doing. We need your help. Pastors, they're, they're here. Praise God. Does your church have a missions outreach program? Amen. Does your church have a missions outreach? Will you partner with us and help us? I've got some different pastors that's called up and help. Praise God. I have friends that helped, and some will say, I want to do something. I want to help. You reach Asia for Jesus Christ. And he said within the uh, next 10 or 20 years, eight out of every 10 people in the world will either be in Africa or Asia. So we got to reach these nations because that's where. The Bible said, praise God, praise the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. And so we ask that you would labor, help us labor and bring the people to the Lord. Amen. If you look at behind me over my, my shoulder there, you can see my voice of revival um, insignia there. Uh, there. And if you see up there they, me praying for people in the village in, in Pakistan, the people who are just, no, no, I was in Mexico. 
And uh, praise God. And, and I thank I thank God for this uh, logo we have there, the uh, picture that was taken <laughs> about 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. And uh, so I, I thank God I look about the same. I thank God for healing me, for healing my body. Praise God. Oh, man, praise God. He healed me of COVID. If you have COVID, I want you to know God can heal you. I'm going to pray right now. Praise God. And uh, I don't have much time left, so I'm going to pray quickly. Lift your hands and believe God. If you need healing, I thank God for the anointing that's coming right now to touch your people. Praise God. Lord, I speak healing. Lord, touch hearts right now in the name of Jesus and help us reach, help us reach many, many souls for you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We th- hey, yes, Lord, we praise your name right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Pray. Yes, Lord, praise God. So as we get ready to end, and uh, Brother, Blaine, Brother Blaine, if you can raise that, um, the video again if we can go out with that praise God amen okay you can um, God has used us to reach the world and I thank God for my children that are helping me reach the world they love God and want to see people saved like their father praise God and mother amen so, Yeah.